Okay, so my son is absolutely obsessed with Minecraft. Uh, he plays it all the time. He watches YouTube videos about it. Um, so what better way to utilize our 3D printers than to print a Minecraft themed marble run? So this is gonna be linked down in the description below if you wanna 3D print one yourself. Uh, but in this video, I'm just gonna walk you through um, the steps that I take to print this and assemble it. All right, so the marble run that I am going to 3D print, uh, this has been out for a while. Uh, I've been eyeing it for a while, just never had the time to actually print one. Uh, it is the Minecraft Chase Marble Run by Chris underscore M. And this is uh, the file, it's on Maker World. Um, you do need some uh, hardware to get this thing assembled, uh, but print files and everything are already on here. So I've already gone and um, downloaded it. Uh, there's 26, I think 26 different plates here using a combination of both brown and green and silver plastic so we're gonna get this sliced uh, we're gonna use our x1 carbons to print this and so let's get right to that so x1 carbon has just received the latest firmware uh, I don't know if you guys have updated your x1 carbons but this is what it looks like um, I think this is to sort of mimic what's on the HCD I'm not 100% sure since I don't have an HCD uh, but this is the new layout um, it now supports the AMS 2 and the AMS HT I have neither, so ignore that completely. Um, but this is kind of what oops, uh, the firmware uh, looks like. All right, so for the brown pieces, um, I have two rolls left of the Bamboo Lab Brown. Um, I'm, I'm hoping this, this should be enough to complete the print. And then um, we're gonna be using this grass green from Bamboo Labs. Uh, this is actually my last roll of green. I don't have regular green, so we're gonna be using this matte grass green. Um, hopefully it doesn't mess around with any of the tolerances when assembling the pieces. Um, so we're just going to get these two loaded. Uh, we have two X1 carbons, like I mentioned, uh, free right now. We're going to be using that one and that one. Uh, once this is done printing, what it's printing, we're going to um, use this to print uh, the rest of the pieces. I'm hoping that this whole printing process will probably take maybe a day uh, to two days to fully print. Um, we're going to get this loaded into the X1 carbon and then just start slicing the, the the beds and get these sent uh, to the printer. All right, so we're just gonna start sending off these plates to the printers. Uh, right now it's basically just green and brown. Uh, that I think is like 90% of the plastic colors that we'll be using. And so what I like to do is I like to print uh, these plate by plate. And then what I do is once I send these off to the printers, um, I will uh, update the name of the bed uh, and just say that I printed it. As for the hardware, they do include links on the Maker World page in terms of what hardware you need to use to buy the, uh, to make this Marvel run work. So the first thing is the motor, uh, which is $5.49. You can buy this straight from Bamboo Labs website. Uh, there is also an assembly guide and YouTube videos for this as well. Um, so that'll help you if you have any issues with assembling this uh, entire project. So I'll just re rename the bed, something like this. I'll just say printed uh, and then uh, go on to the next one. Um, you could slice all these files and send all the files to the X1 Carbon. Um, I'm not gonna do that. I'm just gonna print these one by one because some of these will probably only take like, you know, 20, 30 minutes to print. Other ones are gonna take uh, longer overnight prints. So I wanna set these up um, so that I'm printing as uh, efficiently as possible. All right, and so we're just gonna slice these plates individually, send them to the printers. Uh, again, right now we only have two printers going right now um, out of 26 plates, uh, but we should be able to get a majority of this stuff printed out between today and tomorrow. And then I will do an assembly video, uh, assembly of this um, and also just showcasing uh, the final product. Okay, so we have uh, most of the uh, pieces printed out. We're just gonna start assembling this. Uh, I have my phone here, uh, there's a PDF sort of uh, assembly guide here. Um, very straightforward. Um, so we're gonna start assembling uh, the base and then work our way uh, up towards the platform area and um, the slides. So nothing too crazy here, just going through the instruction, uh, you know, page by page. It kind of tells you exactly how to lay everything out um, and then how to assemble the stuff. Um, one thing I want to, to point out while printing this stuff is um, there's a very small, surface contact areas to the build plate. You'll see a lot of these have scuff marks and um, I had issues with the first layer. So I ended up slowing down the print speed by about 50% for the first layer and the first layer infill. I also increased the bed temp from about 50 degrees C to 65 degrees C 
even with the cryo grip sheets um, that seem to have uh, fixed most of the issues. These are kind of the earlier prints that I had. Um, you can see that there were issues. I kind of cleaned these already up. Um, and luckily, you don't really need this to be perfect because all you need this to do is to be able to snap on uh, to the pieces underneath it. So uh, these were able to snap on, no issues. Um, but just a PSA for those who are printing these, um, I didn't want to use a brim. Um, you can use a brim if you want to, or you can just you know do what I did, was, which was slow down uh, the print speed, and uh, you should get good results um, like this one. Okay, so I'm here assembling, uh, I guess, the lifter part of the marble run. Um, and you can see that these pieces are supposed to just, I guess, attach onto the top piece of the brown uh, piece. But I used matte green PLA, and I guess uh, matte wasn't really a good choice. Uh, it kind of broke off. So what I'm doing is I'm just applying uh, some 3D glue to this. And to the pieces that are loose, you'll see that these kind of just pop off. Um, so I'm just applying some glue on the top part here and a very, very little amount just to provide some sort of uh, structural stability so that it doesn't like break off uh, when it's in use. Um, so I've done it for about almost all of them already and this this is the lifter piece that kind of just goes up and down to bring the, uh, I guess, little Minecraft and Marvel guys up and down the marble run. Okay, so literally on every uh, step here, uh, the marble is not able to get over the hump. So I've also tried to just go in and try to um, shave down some of these uh, um, things here, the elevator shafts, I guess. Uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna probably add a piece of tape onto this uh, piece to push it up a little bit higher. So we're gonna try to do that and see if that fixes it. All right, since I'm home, uh, I basically just took some tape uh, and attached it to this piece and this should be hopefully enough give to when it turns up uh, to move this up high enough for the marbles to do that. Alright so as I'm going along building this thing I am uh, gluing the pieces in with 3D glue since I know my kids going to be playing with this and um, as I was assembling it pieces started to fall off uh, while I was doing it so I just figured I'd glue everything as I assembled it. Okay, so this is about 95% done. Uh, everything works perfectly fine. The marbles run on the tracks. Uh, what we're gonna do is we're just gonna print out these water and forest tiles. I already printed out the water tiles here. Uh, that's all these blue ones. And these kind of just go on here as like decor. Um, so you can sort of make like sea tiles, uh, I guess water all along the base, stuff like that. And then on the top here, we're gonna make uh, little forest um, tiles. So we're gonna get that done. Okay guys, here is the final product with all of the water and forest pieces attached. Um, this is the mechanism that brings the marbles up and then right back down. All right, so this was a super fun project to 3D print. It took me about two days across four 3D printers. I used two X1 carbons. Uh, one Bamboo Lab A1 and one Bamboo Lab P1P printer. And we had a few issues, uh, mainly with printing these green pieces. Uh, I used matte PLA and I used the default print settings that was part of the 3MF file. Um, in all honesty, I probably should have tweaked uh, the settings a little bit instead of just using what was provided on the file. That is completely uh, an error on my end. Um, but the matte PLA uh, was so brittle that it, it, it just broke off like these uh, these pieces here um, that sort of connect the the slide pieces together uh, were breaking off and you'll see that kind of made some uh, minor adjustments to some of them um, you'll see that I had just like glued on some pieces uh, just because the the marbles are coming off this ramp super fast and they were falling into the into the abyss down below um, even here 
uh, they were coming off too fast. Uh, I've replaced, you'll see that there's two shades of green here, uh, the darker, the lighter green. These pieces are just regular PLA and this was the matte PLA. And um, a lot of these pieces uh, broke off. You probably can't see it on the camera, but I had to glue all of these connecting pieces back on um, with some 3D gloop. I also really love that you can add these uh, forest and water tiles. You'll see I used two shades of blue here. Um, that was by pure accident. You could have also filled in uh, a little bit more of the center here with more of these uh, brown pieces um, to fill in the middle here. Uh, I didn't. So whenever a marble falls down into the abyss, uh, it's kind of actually difficult to actually get the marbles out from uh, when they're down there. I kind of like take the whole thing and shake it a little bit um, to get the marbles out. Uh, one thing that I hate is the motor that comes with the Bamboo Lab kit that makes this thing spin. Uh, the cable is extremely short, so this is maybe only, I don't know, two feet, if that, maybe a foot and a half. And so I'm running it uh, with an extension cord here. And so uh, when my kid plays with it, I kind of have to put this whole thing on the floor or something like that next to an outlet, which uh, is kind of annoying. All right, and here it is in full action. Uh, this is the mechanism that brings this entire thing up and down. Pretty cool and unique design that um, you can design something like this. Um, yeah. This is the entire thing in action again. I can, I just love watching this thing and I let it run continuously for 20 minutes and um, I just love watching it go up and down. Uh, this is fully customizable, which means that you can make this bigger if you want. You can make this taller. Um, you can do different colors, obviously. Uh, this is fully customizable, which is pretty awesome. I will leave a link in the description to where I found this model over on Maker World. Um, yeah, let me know what you guys think. All right, thank you guys for watching. I will see you guys in the next video.